I'm Virginie O'Shea, founder of Firebrand Research. Well, the theme really was around uh, Europe looking at the move to T plus one. I think a lot of the discussions across the industry have been very focused on the US and Canada, um, understandably so. But uh, yesterday my panel was entirely European, so uh, everyone was talking about what that move means for Europe. Um, so we had a number of people from CSDs, different banks, um, and the, the discussions were around the concerns about um, being out of step with a major market, how do, how do you sort of look at your operational processes, um, do some sort of change programs, seeing when the timeline is going to be, because there, there was a lot of, uh, what's the word, scepticism probably uh, about the 2024 deadline. Uh, there was some... some decisions to be made around that. Uh, there's been a, bit, been a bit of pushback, I think, on the European side about it moving a little bit later, so maybe 2025, 26, possibly, um, in terms of preparedness. Uh, and there was also discussion about whether Europe will follow and how many years after Europe will follow. I mean, there's a huge number of different things uh, that are moving parts to the move, um, and it's not just about the the impact of markets like securities. I think it's beyond that. You have to look at FX, you have to look at payments rails, you have to look at the amount of uh, manual processes you have in place. Um, certainly, I think a lot of financial institutions have some systems that are particularly old and batch-based and would not run very well in a, a sort of uh, intraday environment, let me put it that way, and there's a lot of investment that needs to go in, um, in and a lot of exploration of new technologies and how you basically speed up processes, make them more efficient, uh, rather than adding people, because that's uh, not the default option anymore, I think, in this, in this environment. So I think, uh, yes, I think at a headline level, you'd say, well, removing another day from the cycle, uh, we've done it once, uh, we can do it again. But actually, the reality of T plus one is that you have to now achieve an endpoint to a lot of processes on trade date uh, and there's a good percentage of the volume of business is, it is not achieved of that, in that time frame uh, and, and there are many reasons but some which uh, uh, you know Im immediately spring to mind is actually there's a there's a lot of manual processing still happening within uh, banks and brokers who are processing trades and, in, and indeed kind of across the industry really um, but also that batch process where you're waiting for the end of the day and then you turn the handle uh, and so so uh, that is not going to operate you know within the T plus one uh, suggestion that's coming out through the for, through North America uh, you know you need to be completed your full business fully confirmed with the exchange by uh, 9 p.m. on trade date that is a huge challenge uh, and, and I think there's also a perspective which many people talk about, you know, the, the automation of workflows and, and those in, uh, kind of participants who are capable of automating processes, you know, will, will roll their sleeves up and, and look at those things. But there is a lot of manual process to do with smaller firms who are engaged in this process, who do not have the budget or the software uh, to really step in and automate processes. And I think that's why really one of the key issues is that there's a long tail of, of these smaller firms who also need to engage in the T plus one. It, everybody's in, so it's a, it's a difficult process to, to manage for some of those firms. So central to the process that, uh, um, uh, that the uh, SEC and the DTCC are all putting together is to, to the ability to actually make sure your trade is with the settlement platform ready to be processed by, by that 9 p.m. deadline. But actually there's an awful lot of ancillary processes to do with, with stock loan and borrow, with FX transactions as well as the time zone and it's very easy in North America you know to well to just think about your domestic workflows but if you've got clients in Europe or even further afield in Asia you know by the time orders get executed it's it's way into the evening or night time and if your data isn't in the right place then it's not ready for that settlement process so uh, it's going to have a huge impact on on a lot of firms who work outside the USA who are looking to invest in the USA and one of the reasons that this has been put together is to improve um, kind of settlement efficiency, uh, reduce margin levels, so, it's, so actually there's a cost benefit. But actually there's also a cost. And, and, and actually bringing your clients with you, from a US or North American perspective, bringing your international clients with you on this journey, they've, they've, everyone has got to really kind of wake up to that and understand where the issues are. And, and we've got to help one another to overcome that with better data flow, better processes, better automation where, wherever possible. It's a, it's a huge problem, I think. Yeah, it was, it was really quite illuminating. So first of all, there's a few participants saying, well, it's over there and uh, you know, it's not really in my line of sight. Uh, you know, we'll see what happens in North America. But, but I think for any organization which is involved in an investment process which 
goes through to the USA, it's going to have an impact on the supply of data and then actually the involvement in the process in terms of currency, uh, delivery, stock loan and borrowing and that, 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 that kind of occurs throughout the entirety of the chain of, uh, of workflow. So the banks and brokers sitting here in, uh, in Europe are all going to be impacted by this. And my sense from the survey was that there wasn't a, really a, a, a full engagement in, in this so far. There's a bit of a wait and see. And yet, actually, we're less than two years away from the proposed date. And, and in any type of software development, deployment, we know that two years actually is a very short period of time. Um, and, and more so when you're looking at settlement processes which actually can be uh, um, are driven by technologies which are not capable of being speeded up. And you, you can't wait until 12 months to go and then realize, oh, I've got to put a new system in there. People have to actually start to think about this now and actually be prepared to act and invest now in technology which will allow them to support that workflow. Otherwise, I think you know, there's, there's going to be, it's going to be a bit late. And I think, I think we'll find ourselves, as so many cases, there'll be a few tactical solutions around the edges and uh, and I suspect that there will be a, a problem with settlement for some firms when they realise that they're not up to the, up to the mark. So the survey was illuminating in, in that respect, actually, that some people were thinking about it, but there were quite a few firms who are not. And I think those are the ones, that's, that's almost the most worrying piece is actually people are not picking up the speed on the, uh, on the, on the, on the kind of a, a whole T plus one, uh, um, all of the activities they need to get, get involved in. And then they're not, they're not thinking about it, there's no speed to it.